friend of mine from uh, Tennessee is a brilliant scientist when it comes to radioactive material and the disposal of radioactive waste. He worked at Oak Ridge Laboratories. He published this book here, Creations, Tiny Mysteries. Excellent book about radio polonium halos. You can get it through our ministry in our bookstore or on our website. Robert Gentry was doing tremendous work. It was published in many major science journals about radio polonium halos being found in granites all over the world. I went and met with Robert Gentry, saw, his, saw the polonium halo through the microscope in his laboratory, and everybody was fine until they realized, wow, his research proves the Big Bang Theory is not true. And boy, they shut off his funding and his grant money in a hurry. He uh, finally uh, said, well, we don't, we don't have a job for you anymore, just because his research was supporting creation. Dr. Robert Gentry up in uh, Halo, at, go to www.halos.com and see for yourself. Dr. Uh, uh, sorry, Roger DeHart was a science teacher in, uh, near Seattle, Washington. He was told he could not inform his students of errors in the textbooks. Here they've got textbooks with mistakes in them, but he couldn't tell the students about the mistakes because if they, those mistakes were used to support the evolution theory. He said, they said you can't even pass out current science journals to inform students of mistakes in the textbooks. That's not science. That's that, uh, you know, burn the heretic attitude that some people get, or go burn the witch, you know. And there's, a, talk about a witch hunt. The evolutionists are on a witch hunt against the creationists in the public schools. They will try desperately to get them fired from their job. Kevin Haley was a biology teacher at Central Oregon Community College in Bend, Oregon. He lost his job simply because he was exposing errors in the textbooks. He'd say, kids, information on page 87 has been proven wrong. Disregard that. That won't be on the test. And he's right. It was proven wrong. I debated one professor one time, and I gave out like 20 or 30 lies in the textbooks, and he got up and said, now, folks, Hovind's right. All these things are not true. But he said, Hovind, I got a question. What are you going to replace all this with? <laughs> in other words, we can't take the lies out of the books until I find a replacement. In other words, I've got to provide evidence for his theory, or else we can't take the lies out of the books. Talk about dumb. Uh, that's not the way science works, okay? You teach the kids the truth. Just teach the truth, okay? And if all you have are lies to back up your theory, then get a new theory. In uh, Texas, Baylor University fired William Dembski just because he advocated that there might be an intelligent designer. Oh, that's heresy. There could be a designer. You're out of here. You're fired. Forrest Mims was a science writer for 20 years. He published in National Geographic, Science Digest, American Journal of Physics, over 60 magazines and newspapers. He was denied a job as science writer for Scientific American simply because he was a creationist. They didn't want to have a creationist on their staff. Teacher Rod Levesque was told he could not uh, share information that might help students doubt Darwin's theory. See, Darwin's theory is sacred. You don't question it without losing your job in many school systems. Okay? The same thing happened in Russia 10, 15 years ago. If a teacher got up in their class and said, kids, I don't believe communism works, <laughs> he'd be out of a job and maybe out of the country or out of this life, they'd kill him or send him off to Siberia. You get the same kind of academic Siberia, people sent off to academic Siberia if they don't support the evolution theory right here in America, the land of the fee and the home of the slave. Mr. Uh, Eller told his teacher Dan Clark in Lafayette, Indiana, Mr. Eller was the uh, superintendent, that he could not introduce creationism to his class. So uh, Dan Clark resigned, he quit. Many good teachers are dropping out of the public school system because they're not allowed to teach kids the truth. The problem is not the law. The law says you can teach creation. Not a problem to teach creation legally. The courts have ruled it's okay to teach creation, but the boss says don't do it. The ACLU, which is the American Communist Lawyers Union, they learned years ago all they have to do is threaten to sue and the school will back down. Even though the ACLU knows they will lose the suit, doesn't matter, the threat of a suit is enough to make it the, teacher, the teachers get fired, just the threat of a suit. And so that's what's happening. We're losing by default. They're not even putting up a good fight. Dean Kenyon was a professor at uh, San Francisco State University in San Francisco. He wrote uh, many books about evolution. He was the poster boy for the evolutionist. He was a strong believer in the theory. And one day he got converted and began to believe in creation. And they fired him. He sued. They put him back in as a lab assistant, you know, washing test tubes, which the students do normally. And here's a guy, 20-year, I believe, tenured professor, Finally, after a long battle, he was reinstated with his job. But if he hadn't been tenured, he wouldn't have kept his job. That's what happened to Dean Kenyon. He wrote the book Of Pandas and People, which you can get through our ministry. Uh, Dr. Denny at uh, Texas Tech University had on his website for years that if you wanted to get recommended for medical school, he's from Lubbock, Texas, that you had to confess to believing in evolution. If you don't believe in evolution, you, he's not going to recommend you for medical school. When I spoke in Lubbock, Texas in the fall of 2002, 
The students there got together and offered Denny $900 if he would debate me. He refused. He wouldn't debate for two hours for 900 bucks. I don't know how much he makes an hour, but I suspect it's not quite that much. So, Mr. Denny, I'll come anytime, anywhere, and take you on intellectually in a debate on creation evolution. Evolution is one of the dumbest ideas in the history of humanity, and the devil is laughing at you for believing in that silly theory. And it's, if you don't trust Christ, you're going to go to hell. I'm not your enemy, I'm your friend. I don't want to see you go to hell. I'd like to see you get converted. But what you're doing is unfair and certainly unwise and I think un-American. To require a student to believe a certain religion and all you have is a religious worldview of evolution and you require students to believe that before you give them a recommendation letter. Come on, grow up, let kids learn the truth. We can go on and on how people are discriminated against by, because of their belief in creation. Uh, Patrick Henry College was notified they were going to deny their uh, recommendation uh, to be accredited simply because they didn't believe in evolution. We'll have lots of information on our website about how students or universities or teachers are discriminated against because of their belief in creation. Now it wasn't always this way. If you go back in the past, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, all the scientists believed in creation. Here's a list of quite a few scientists, Francis Bacon, Johann Kepler, uh, Blaise Pascal, Robert Boyle, uh, Isaac Newton. These guys were the founders of major branches of science, Carolus Linnaeus, and they were creationists. George Cuvier. Um, on and on the list goes of hundreds and hundreds, if not